On PM Express tonight, we're asking uh, how is the state of the Ghanaian worker? And the question has been higher wages, better pensions, the way forward. That's what we've been asking since uh, Ghanaian workers have been celebrated or joined other workers across the world to celebrate the Workers' Day. The Ghanaian worker is demanding a new social contract with government as pensions and low salaries dominated uh, today's uh, May Day celebration. And the workers are demanding for a roadmap for universal pension coverage in Ghana. Now, if you followed activities at the... Um, Black Star Square, you would realize that the workers were there in their numbers. They carried placards communicating to government what they really wanted. One of them, they say, low coverage of pension and payment of inadequate pension benefits have been uh, are the major factors affecting the Ghanaian worker. And this situation has been linked to low salaries as well as the formula for pension computation. Now, of the 200,000 pensioners on a SNET, about a quarter of the number received 300 Ghana cities as pension, which the TUC says is woefully inadequate. And this, uh, the TUC General Secretary today said, is leading to a high incidence of poverty among pensioners. Now, huge government um, indebtedness to SNIT and the consistent non-payment of this debt, the TUC again says, will collapse the pension scheme. Discrimination against women in terms of access to social security has also featured strongly, which the TUC says is due to flaws in social security legislations and failure of social security policies to recognize the need of the vulnerable people in society. The TUC, however, wants a number of things done. And it says it wants government to bridge the social security inadequacies in pension benefits. Let's see how the president, Kufuado, responded to some of the issues. And he says, government is set to establish a cocoa farmers pension scheme, which will gradually be extended to all other sectors. And there has generally uh, been uh, concerns over the more than 80% of all government revenues which is used on remuneration, remunerations and conditions of services. So as we celebrate workers under the theme sustainable pension for all, the role of social partners, the big question we're asking tonight on PM Express, are higher wages and better pensions the way forward to enhancing the state of the Ghanaian worker? We'll be finding answers from the people who know it. And I'll introduce my guest to you, so this break, please stay with us. Welcome back on PM Express. My guest in the studio, Austin Game, is a household name. He's a labor consultant. And Solomon Kote is also a household, a household name. And he's the secretary general to ICU. Good evening, gentlemen. Good to see you. Thank you. I'd like us to begin with a theme for today's celebration. And of course, uh, the role of um, sustainable pension for all, the role of social partners. And indeed, the General Secretary of the TUC has enumerated a lot of challenges facing workers in this country. But, I mean, more importantly, over the years, this has been on the table and we've been talking about it. Has it improved at all in any way, uh, Mr. Kote? Well, thank you. And my regards to your viewers. At this stage, we're realizing that people who take to pensions, um, if you visit their life and you see how they are faring, it gives a feedback that it's not getting where we wish to find ourselves. Mm -hmm. So a lot of questions had come up as to whether or not is the level of salaries that we earn before we retire, or the kind of investments need does with our monies, or the kind of formula that is applied to give us what we deserve to have, or the kind of module that entire need formula keeps, and then that throws up to the contributor at the time that he has attained the age of 60. Mm. So <clears throat> this has also led to um, the question that came by reason of a theme that sustainable pension, the role of stakeholders. Mm. So that uh, this is not a one facet issue to one uh, of the parties. It means the employer, the worker and government 
equally have something to do about it to improve the livelihood of pensions. People shouldn't take to pension and then die three months or one year or two years thereafter. Uh, our data we try to look at showing that many people, one, they have miserable life, two, they, they get more sicknesses, they are not able to care for themselves and eventually they die. Yeah. So this particular 2019 May Day is meant to talk more on the various you know, dimensions of the contributions that we make to SNIT and what reverts back to us in our old age. Now, the organized labor have looked at the question of the computation of the SNIT benefit itself. The actuary scientists who might have come out with the formula, as I see it as a labor expert, I will not be able to define why it should be three years of your best salary, why is you multiplied by uh, your best three years, mm -hmm. okay? Why not five years? Why not two years? Okay. Yeah. It should be divided by a particular figure, 55.6. Where is that figure also coming from? So for us, we think it's about time SNIT will do as good as we find on their portals. We are not only interested in the parameters as they have posted there, but what and what constitutes them. So that if I'm a contributor and I know I must do something more to get me what would put me living and not just to survive, then the worker, while he's at, 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 at post, will be able to look at those things. And we think that is critical and that is important. Mm. Because in Ghana today, we are realizing that our uh, average life for death, okay, is improving. People are not dying like we used to have it before. But what quality of life do we live before that period meets us? So this is what has actually informed the theme for 2019, maybe. Mr. Gami, how dangerous is it for a country like Ghana, for a worker to work hard and at the end of the day earn very little, and to the extent that such a worker goes home with nothing, with as low as 300 Ghana cities, and later die after pension? Thank you. Uh, happy May Day for everybody. Thank you very much. Obviously, uh, the spirit behind the pension scheme uh, have been thrown overboard. I happen to represent Nat as one of the commissioners that wrote the pension scheme. And I must say that uh, I'm highly disappointed because uh, the spirit behind the writing of the uh, uh, pension scheme uh, is not the way we intend it, it's not what we are seeing today. Uh, maybe because of the delay in, in paying the totality, past and present, uh, it might have contributed immensely to it. But generally speaking, to be honest with you, um, the little actuarial study we did during the writing of the, of the scheme, uh, if we are to implement it properly, I assure you, uh, the Libra, even some eight years ago, uh, that was earning as low, you know, the mini barest minimum wage, uh, upon the study, we realized that the lump sum he would have taken uh, away from the second year would have been about 10,000 Ghana cities at that time before SNIT would take over and be paying uh, his uh, pension as, as it were. Yeah. So the person would have been reasonably okay uh, if you like uh, a little bit of uh, adequacy would have been there. Unfortunately because of non-payment past and present uh, as we wish it, it should be uh, has, might have contributed to the situation in which they find themselves. So I think that the solution is also clear. Fortunately, organized labor served on the SNIT board. Not just one or two, they are there. So together with all the contributors, I'm an employer also, I contribute for my working people uh, that pay their, 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 I pay their, their SNIT and their second tier. I think that they should have a conversation there should be a forum for a conversation to be held, and it should not be excluded. It should not be people, just some three, four, five, ten people. It shouldn't be a partisan business. All of us are contributing. I mean, and, and therefore, we need to have a conversation about what really the spirit behind this thing is. We'll find a solution to it. Mm. I think it can be done. Mm. But the TUC um, actually wants a universal pension coverage in Ghana. Achievable? The, it could be done. It depends upon how all of us agree to expand the economy and, and employ more people. People are being paid reasonably well, so their contribution will be reasonably high. 
that when you leave, you know, if you take, you go to the Scandinavian countries, they pay higher, you know, contribution, higher taxes. When you retire, you return your pay. Here is a portion. And therefore, like he said, if there is a, an actuarial study that is enabling SNIT to pay, use a certain formula. Can we have a conversation? Those serving on the SNIT board, can they have a conversation about it? Can they expand the conversation? Can we all participate in it in one way or the other? And be able to determine how best it could be done to enable SNIT as the, um, uh, the, the investment uh, vehicle uh, to survive and be sustainable whilst the people who earn the pension also get their due share. Likewise, the fund managers that are made, uh, uh, funding the, and uh, managing the second tier equally uh, should have a conversation broadly. It should not be limited to just as need. The fund managers are equally very important in this matter. Mm -hmm. So I think that w the, the way forward is for us to have a conversation. So for a long time, we've all come to understand that it's low salaries that um, ends up making your pension very low and today we're learning that the computation which you mentioned earlier is a very important factor in this whole thing how have uh, the SNET explained to you how the computation is done and and how, how you were able to relate to the fact that it's actually playing a role in the low pensions uh, workers are having you will agree with me that when it comes to crunching figures and you have to do multiplication, division, and addition. Whatever you aggregate and you divide with will give you a particular sum. So the question was raised, why are you taking only my best three years salary? Okay. Okay. Why are you dividing it by three? Okay. Then in the process, you come to say, we will use 55.63 also, okay, to divide whatever figure I get from my best three years salary times three, okay, where that figure also, what does it represent? So as I talk to you now, organized labor has brought pressure on SNET, okay, to actually make bare this formula for us to appreciate it. Because the fact is, if I know that this is the kind of formula that will be applied on me, one parameter that it is on my demand, let me put it this way, I know I'll go on retirement. But personally, I can go and make additional contribution to my SNIT funds with, with SNIT. Then I'll take that responsibility on my own, not only leaving it to the employer. Okay? Then that will give me a future and a hope for pension that should not scare me if I'm to go on pension. Mm -hmm. Because what we are seeing today uh, at the workplace, people want to retire, then they're asking for contract. They are scared because they are not ready for so many other things. So this is what organized labor have done. And we want the formula to be attested with some authority because those who created this formula, we don't know whether it was because of the funds available, they are looking at the people to be serviced in any given year, okay, returns on investments that were not coming. If the SNIT is, uh, is having a backlog of arrears that have not come to the pool at the time of the uh, sharing, then obviously they will look at what is available and share that. So that arrears that will come. Today we heard the president that before he took office, there was need contribution arrears for whatever billion he mentioned. Mm. So if what I get depends on what is available, and if what is available have not been disclosed, then it means that I'm going to be shortchanged and short paid. Yes. This is what organized labor have been pushing in the last two years. That need should come out clear, and then let's get the formula well defined to appreciate every parameter that is inside. Then that will let the populace know that this is what we can also do. Um, I don't know, but if you will agree with me, we should look at this pension thing beyond those of us in the formal sector. Okay. Because just 20% of us are in the formal sector. And large more of Ghanaian workers, they are workers for the fact that they are not in the unionized environment or in the formal environment. They are also workers. That is why we saw the third tier in the Art 7 Sisters giving room that they could also come in and then come and contribute. But how are we enforcing that? Because a chunk of these people now becomes a burden on society. A farmer will not be able to control the farm after the age of 70. And if he or she returns, comes from the produce that he has and he cannot go to farm again, then what happens? That is why our poverty level also keeps growing. The work situation in the economy is just not there for people to have. And Ghanaians are now supposed to create jobs. Okay, 
That is why today, when we look around, almost all artisanal institutions are trying to teach entrepreneurial, you know, subjects to so allow the students to know that there is no job out there waiting for you to leave and then go and take it up. Mm -hmm. Now, if um, we discuss pensions and we leave it only to those people in the formal sector, we'll be doing a big disservice to the entire nation because over 80 percent are outside the formal sector because they also matter and they count. But more interesting is um, the, the issue that the president raised today, but that's not the first time we're hearing this, but it's, it's actually a very big problem that more than 80% of all government revenues are directed to the payment of um, public sector workers. And that actually means that the other sectors, education, health, infrastructure, and what have you, would have to now uh, compete against a 20% of government revenue left. That could be dangerous. Well, I don't know how many people sleep tonight upon hearing that information from the president. As soon as I heard it, I said, wow, we are in for trouble. And coincidentally, today, uh, he was launching Ghana Beyond Aid. So I was so scared and nervous. To be honest with you, this is not a, 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 some, a subject matter that people should listen to and play the traditional dirty politics with it. We should put the partisan aspect of it. If you want just politics where decision is made, fine. All of us will belong to it. But if people want to play partisan politics with it, it's up to them. But I can assure you that 80% of national income being used to pay public and civil service, I'm not too sure we can last the journey we want to cover ourselves getting out of uh, IMF. Mm. It means we are, uh, we, we are in trouble. So we clearly must come together as a people and have a conversation, discuss without limit, and find a way of addressing this issue. It's all about bad planning. It's all about poor leadership. It's all about non-productiveness of the working people. And when I say working people, from managing director down and everybody, the issue I heard today on the radio, everybody trying to find some hidden uh, agenda about it, uh, uh, talking about uh, if you go to the workplace, there are no tools, there are no this, there are no that. We must sit down and talk about it because people go to negotiate at the table all the time. Mm. We must, in negotiating, we must talk about how will the work itself be processed? Because we must generate before we share. And that's why the labor law is very clear. I hear people talking about, let's amend, amend what? Section 97 is the heartbeat of the law. You must share relevant information. And once you share information, then we all know how to enhance the productivity of the employer. We all know the tasks we have to perform. We all know how we should link productivity with payment. But we are paying people for putting in appearance at the workplace and expect that the, the country will grow. I don't want to blame anybody. Mm. And you can't certainly, the president is only one person. He cannot work for this place and work this place and work this place. He can only provide some level of leadership. All we need now is to agree. When we go to our negotiation table, it's about the work, it's about the income, it's about disbursement. And so pay is just a small segment of it. And so the problem the president was enumerating today, the most scary of it all is not so much even about the pension again, it's about our unproductive nature, it's about the income that we generate, that 80%. We were chopping 70% and we said we were left with the boom. Now 80. I don't know what is left. Mr. Kota, you wanted to... Well, when I heard that from the president, uh, I, I was not just scared, but I got traumatized. And I was asking, has the door of indiscipline been opened after coming out from IMF? Because we've now been giving figures of people that are going to be enrolled into the public sector. Yeah. This obviously is going to come as a burden again. And if this burden is not managed, then it's like we are going to visit the IMF for the 17th 
time. Mm. And look at the struggle we went through when the IMF came. The strings they put around and the liberties that were curtailed. We were forced to say, let's do our homegrown own policies and what have you. That didn't work out. And if we look at the backlog of unemployment situation, mm. okay, and the kind of pressure that is coming that we need jobs and we must be given jobs. And this government is also very clear that, look, we will supply you with the jobs. This is going to add on to the burden. Like my senior brother said, under the NDC and the Jomama, when the total revenue of the economy were using 70%, okay, and I recall he was making a passionate appeal to labor that can we do something about what is paid to us so that the other sectors of the economy could also see progress, mm. okay? Yeah. But then you look at the cost of living in the country and what workers are currently and presently even taking, there's a whole problem with it. Mm. And I can tell you, not by way of joke, you visit the banks and when some workers' salaries are paid in, the bank uh, tellers will ask, hey, you are still taking allowances, when will your pay come? Because the pay is in the ranges of 300, 400, 600 Ghana. And we all know if you are an individual in, in a rental house and you pay a rent of even less than 50 Ghana, okay, and you don't even have a family, you pay electricity and water, and you commute what is left with you, okay. So this is a major challenge to government. You see, the more we, we hear these things, then we're asking. So, so far, the oil that we have found, what revenue is the oil actually also generating to us? Because even in the face of oil, we are going to see more poverty. Yep. Then where are we actually heading towards to? Because it's, it's, it's a day that I'll never forget which is today. Because mm -hmm. the president was being factual to Gary. Mm -hmm. And the things he has said, we'll, we'll face the crunch of it. Mm -hmm. If nothing is actually Very soon. done about it. Yes, because... We are about to enter into another negotiation period, yep. okay? And could the workers all the time continue to sacrifice and sacrifice? Mm. All other factors that comes with expenditures on the payroll must be defined. This has been labor position. Mm -hmm. How much is the government is spending, okay? What is the budget of the uh, cabinet portfolio, ministerial portfolio, and all that and all that? If that rationalization will come, it's not just to say that the total is 80. The 80, what percentage belongs to what? Mm. What percentage goes where? Okay. okay, when these things are really defined, and we are all supposed to do something, then we know who we'll begin to say, okay, ours, let's slash it down by 5% or 10%. Mm. So uh, I will agree with my brother that it calls for a bigger consensus because if it's left like that, and we also want to demand our pound of flesh, is the economy that will eventually suffer. It, it may be a bigger challenge, but one would say um, there are things that we could actually do internally to probably cut down 80% to maybe 60%. For instance, I put this issue on social media and one, some of the um, comments I had was that there are people, one person's salary that can pay about 10 people in Ghana, yet such people do not even do anything in their offices. They just go waste uh, uh, resources. You think it's a genuine concern? Look, my sister. Any nation that is using more than 35%, maximum maybe 40% of its income, total income on consumption, then we are heading for trouble. And we're talking about 80%. Whoever is listening to you, and we think we will go and sleep and wake up in the next six months to come, this nation will be heading towards something. So the president was being honest, factual, and accurate to the point. But should we blame mm. um, the president now, what for is nominating, for instance, 100 and uh, now it's even more than 110 because recently we've had regional ministers also that, who are joining that the, the trail. Reason why We're having more uh, presidential staffers. Uh, we could start from there. That is the reason why we must have a national conversation, a non-partisan, because if it's going to be partisan, I will come be there. Yeah. If it's going to be non-partisan, if I'm invited, I will be there and share my thoughts. Yeah. I think that what we need to do is to address this issue frontally. Organize labor through the tripartite mechanism, and generally speaking, those of us who have some idea, we must open up. We must stop the partisan aspect of it and allow us to have the conversation because
temporary as it may, we are here in this country. We are not gone yet. Since we are here, we must be allowed to participate in it. Thank God the president said in his inauguration that we should not be spectators. We should be spectators. So I really want to share my ideas if I'm invited into it. But if it's going to be uh, MPP, NDC, then they won't find me there. They won't. <laughs> and definitely we won't even find solutions because we'll end up playing politics with it. Mm -hmm. But the president also made a very fundamental uh, point uh, when he was addressing the uh, workers. And he, he, he actually threw a question to Ghanaians that we should ponder over it. That should we improve on the um, condition of those who already have jobs? Or we should actually consider providing jobs for, or making jobs available for everyone so that everyone yeah. can be employed. Yeah, just in before the he comes in, mm. it's precisely because of the statement he made about the 80%, hence that passionate appeal. Okay. And the point here is that very soon, after September, just after September, we're going to have not less than, maybe I may be even wrong, but not less than 250,000 people being poured into the job market again. Mm. And they are going to add to the already, you know, precarious situation. And so therefore, he, the, the, the point he raised was very legitimate. And I'm happy he brought it to the front banner. But the issue is, that is just a statement. Now, how do we translate it into an actionable thing? Mm. That's why we must have a non-partisan national conversation. Mm. But that, that could be dicey for the country and sure. even for government because this is a president that has promised more jobs for the people and it's the same government that has promised better conditions for workers. How do they then uh, marry this two and, and, and choose between what the president is asking us to ponder over? See, I'll pick it from this angle. So long as we don't have a national agenda and we allow political parties to use their manifesto to drive us, and this time they come in the driving seat, they create their own mantra. And in that mantra, they try to let the Ghanaian populace appreciate the fact that we can do better for you. Yeah. And we want to hold them to it. And because of that accountability to the point of making, uh, going to the pools to vote again, they are compelled to take some decisions that at the end of the day, it affects the entire economy. Mm. Now, the question you raised that do we hold on to those who are already having jobs, okay, withhold their conditions, improvement, and then spare it to create, you know, other conditions for others. Already, those who are having jobs, their take-home pay is nothing to write home about. The cost of living in the economy, uh, Aisha, I believe you follow it and you know it all. The baskets of goods brought together to determine even our inflation makes life seriously unbearable for the average Ghanaian. So I don't know which segment of the society's income that maybe they want to hold that one constant, that that one will not be receiving improvement or increases so that others could be looked at. The others that could be looked at, which jobs are we now going to create? Because the jobs are simply not there. Okay, if our data is anything to go by and we know how many you know, young graduates are poured in? Because now in our tertiary institutions, we have how many tertiary institutions? Almost about 40. Yeah. So if the average is even bringing out 500 people graduating, multiply by 40, and then look at the numbers, are there those available jobs? But I want to stretch this discussion to pick it. Is our internal revenue service really collecting all the revenue that are supposed to be collected. That's another um, okay. issue yes. that has been raised. Because the eighty percent mentioned it implies what is available. So if yeah. more could come, mm -hmm. the probability will not be eighty, it could go down to about sixty or fifty and then we will have that flexibility to look at the economy. Sure. But if there is a uh, there's there's a block because we hear them by first quarter of the year, oh we have overseed it. So who, who are setting the targets? Mm. And are we getting to everybody? I was so glad when this government took to registration of every company and every individual giving us the team numbers. Okay. So that whoever does any business, you are supposed to pay tax, you can be roped in. We are here to see the benefit of that exercise that the Register General actually rolled out. And then we could see that, yes, the reality is that the revenue we are actually collecting we can collect more than that mm. because in Ghana here we can say a lot more people are not paying taxes. Mm. People are doing businesses in their briefcase and they don't pay tax. And we think government should stretch its efforts, okay? And 
let's have avenues of getting more revenue. But to come to say those who are earning better. The more you earn, the bigger your expenditure also goes. Mm -hmm. So if I've got that taste of living according to my own sweat and effort, then you come and tell me, reduce it. That will not work. That will not, I don't know how they are going to get that one than that. Like they attempted when they were trying to put the tax brackets and they said those who earn more than 20,000 were going to pay this X, you know, percentage on their taxes mm. so that the progressive tax, you know, initially they brought it to the 10,000 yes. and now quickly and then later they reversed it. because they saw the challenges. Yeah. Okay. Because if, let's say, Aisha has risen to the top and now she had a home where she uses a gardener, a watchman, and that, 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 that. 13 if, air conditioning. Yes, if, if you want to cut it off, okay, then it means you are also going to ask these people to go home and then you begin to do the laundry yourself and all that. How feasible is that going to be? And how productive will that be? Either in the short term or the long term. Okay, areas. so it, it, it will look uh, a good approach. But is it workable? There's been concerns of um, overburdening the 40% of people who've been true, true to government and say we are the tax, we want to pay taxes and letting the other 60% go. So those 60% are not paying taxes. Those people who are being honest and paying taxes are now overburdened. How do we deal with this challenge? Is the, uh, is the, is the, is the, uh, GR, um, the GRA failing us? I think they are doing their best. The problem with that is that what the informal sector of the economy has not been properly, you know, registered. We need to create a platform for the carpenters, for the masons, for the organizers to have a conversation with the authorities that are concerned so that they can be properly registered. They are not properly registered. Maybe some of them are not even registered at all. Mm -hmm. Look, the registered is the Joy FM, is the Gamma and Gamma, is the Unilever, is the ICU. These are TUC. Those are the people who are registered. What we need to do is to get everybody on board. Because uh, any time my administrator come and say, uh, pay uh, SNIT, I say, pay GRA, I say, wow. Because of the way we operate and the character and nature of the job we do, our integrity is at stake. So we are compelled to pay it even without prompting. Mm. But others, they don't care. You have to maybe chase them and so forth and so on. It's not easy paying those things. But how many, what percentage? You have mentioned 60%, I'm surprised. Mm. If 60% are paying, it would have been better off. Mm. I don't think 60% are paying. Mm. What we need to do is to have, I repeat, a national conversation devoid of the traditional partisan politics. If we can do that, we can get all of us on board. Now, there's a very um, important sector in the workforce and I, I, I must say um, they are even more than the men women because of course generally uh, more women in the population than men and uh, the TUC uh, Secretary General raised this issue of discrimination against women um, in terms of access to pension and uh, specifically he says um, in terms of access to social security and he says this is due to flaws in social security legislations and failure of social security policies to recognize the need of the vulnerable people in society how how well, far has organized labor come in ensuring that this gap has been bridged uh fortunately for us in icu we started a pilot project where we are uh, can say the biggest union that have the informal sector with us so we chose to use the Ghana uh, Hair British Association, GABA, okay? And then the pilot project was that how many of them, because they are employers on their own, okay? They are owners of saloons and all that. So how can they also begin to pay, you know, their SNIT contributions? They, they started. But, you know, for you to realize a good SNIT outcome, your contribution must be reasonable, must be big. But here they are. If a whole day no job happens at the end of the month, they don't have a, a calculated pay to take because you are the owner of the business. So for us in ICU, we set up training how to keep simple day books, how to separate yourself from the business, the entity concept and all that. We try to teach them. But we noticed they started with some zeal. But with time, it died out because pressures that they have, most of these women are taking care 
of their children, paying their fees, supporting mothers, supporting that. So the burden on the average woman in Ghana is so heavy. Mm -hmm. Even though we've also tried to do this capacity building for women across our you know, frontier. But you notice that the kind of burdens they have will not give them that flexibility to come up and get into the relevance that we want to see them you know to be so it's not just an issue of uh, putting it on paper and saying it if we can tax the various actors in the society and say how do we get this thing rolled out and give ourselves timelines and see what can be done mm -hmm. they'll be mm -hmm. making results yeah. because we were sick and tired that Every May Day, we find government functionaries, we find secretary generals reading wonderful statements. At the end of the day, it goes on the shelf, nothing happens, waiting for another year again also, you know, to come. So we are taxing ourselves that all actionable statements that we are making, how do we work it out? Because we are getting sick and tired when wonderful promises. Mm. Let's take, for example, in 2017, when the president was able to break the kind of attitude of the Ghanaian worker coming to work late, closing early, uh, taking A4 sheets, taking pens, everything the president said was true. Okay? And this Especially were, in the public sector. Yes, public sector and civil sector. I have always separated the private sector where yeah. predominantly we work. Yeah. Because you will find those things there. Exactly. You will find the question of productivity at the private sector. It is a public sector. Mm -hmm. And they are taking a chunk of our taxes and not allowing us to have exactly. the flexibility so. that we should have. Mm -hmm. When he said all those things, we thought we were going to see some discipline. There are some ministries you go there. The drivers are more than the cars. So they come and sit down. They come and sit down. No job for them. No vehicles. All the vehicles are parked. No tie, no battery, no whatever. Some even that have got the tie and the battery, they say no fuel. Okay? Some uh, state institutions should go because they are doing now the uh, pre-paid meter. Eh? Light is off. So they cannot work. Yeah. And then they sit down like that because no money, no funds. So a lot of the uh, structural sectors are suffering. Mm. Are suffering because funding to make them active is simply not there. Mm. And therefore, when we come to the issue of our women, how nicely the second Digina has projected it, what is left is how do we walk this talk? And I believe if we commit ourselves, all and organized labor, if it's feasible for us to get it done, or if this segment of the society of the women we are talking about are outside our domain, which you know people who also be made responsible about them and see how we drive these things. Because let me tell you, the ICU, when we're looking at this coming May Day with organized labor, we got sick and tired that good grammar, we borrow statements that are made by you know great intellectuals come and put nice on paper, and it goes to sleep until another May Day season again. Mm -hmm. So we want to see something different, and we are happy that all these statements have come. The next task is let's put ourselves together and then work it out. Okay. Let, let me tell you this. <clears throat> When we were writing the pension scheme, we invited the Makola women, and they came. We spent time with them. We went through the entire 10 regions at a time. And I want to say that the women said they were not comfortable with SNITs. We pleaded with them money to get them to accept the possibility of contributing towards the third tier. Okay. Now, the other thing worth mentioning is that Organized labor, to me, is the only vehicle that can make things happen in this country. Mm. Because some of you and I, we can't talk much. Mm. I can't go to government. Mm. But organized labor has tremendous, I don't know what they government want to be, a, I don't know, not, not strike. Mm. There is a potent, the, our law is no joke. Yeah. I don't know what they want. Section 113 of the Labor Act gives them tremendous trapatite power. And so why are they crying? They should go to trapatite and have this conversation. Mm -hmm. That is it. No strike. Use your brain. Use your skill. If you need help, look for help. We should stop playing games with these things. And again, on SNIT board, if SNIT is not doing well, Organized labor is there. Mm. They have the capacity. Look, the Secretary General of TUC is an economist. He is a doctor. He is a PhD holder. 
He has the capacity. Let them use their brains. Let them use their skill. And they have the numbers. Only that we should not waste our energy by going on strike. We should go and use our brains and talk. Yeah, that should be the last reason. And that is a, even even the Labour Commission is going to report. Look, the Labour Commission is a powerful tool also. It's how to organize labor, how they want to make use. It's up to employers, how they want to make use. It's up to government as employer. Mind you, that's why I used to separate it. Government is an employer. When it comes to politics, they can go to parliament and do whatever they want to do. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to employer-employee relations, they are employers. Mm -hmm. And so they must be seen as such. And they cannot go and tell uh, Labor Commission, this is the way we want to do it. The law is very clear as to what to do. Yeah. But you agree that social security policies in this country are actually flawed, just like um, uh, Dr. Um, Anthony. No, uh, we, have, we have three tier system. It does not actually recognize the vulnerable. No, system. there is there's nothing like that. It's, mm -hmm. it's an open door okay. for everybody. I form part of the team. I represent them not on the pension scheme. And I want to say on authority that the scheme is clean clear. That's why we have first year, which is statutory. Mm -hmm. We have second year, which is an occupational scheme. Mm -hmm. We have third year, which is voluntary. Okay. What we need is education. And here NCC comes in. Okay. NCC is also another powerful vehicle mm -hmm. that must be supported materially, financially, to be able to deliver. Mm -hmm. And they should not, they should stop domesticating the ideas. Okay. They must go be, you know, beyond the, the boundaries they find themselves in mm -hmm. and open up and stop hiding in silos. So we can all engage and talk about these things. It's an engagement. But, but generally, how would you assess SNET? Because if you speak to workers, you get the sense that if they had an option, they would rather jump onto a private pension scheme rather than SNET. And because uh, perhaps it hasn't functioned properly over the years, and partly because of government's indebtedness to the scheme, and um, plus all the corruption allegations we've seen recently with the scheme. W would you say that it has performed poorly over the years? Well, let me say that when we were writing the pension scheme, we saw a lot of things wrong. And this is started from 2006 there about. All I want to say is that yesterday government, today government, Everybody has a part to play in this. We need to understand that SNIT is not the property of any individual. SNIT is a statutory, um, compulsory contribution kind of this thing, and nobody can run away from it. Even if you don't pay your this thing, you, <clears throat> you are made to pay penalty. So it's, it's compulsory. And therefore, the management of the scheme must be brought to the front banner. I am very pleased that my friend and former Minister of Defense, Dr. Kwame Adokufo, is the chairman. But I want to say that I rely more, physically speaking, on organized labor on that, that board mm -hmm. because they are the mouthpiece of we, the workers. Yeah. And everybody, including a managing director, is a worker. Mm -hmm. So whether you like it or not, they represent us there. Yep. And therefore, whatever they go there, if they bring the books and they bring that thing, do you look into it? If you look into it, what have you seen? What reporting do we get? We don't have any education. <clears throat> we don't have any information. We need a lot more information about the activities of SNEED than we are having now. Mm. You, you, um, so what you just mentioned, um, apart from going beyond the computation, because you, you actually need them explaining to you that you're using a third of your best salary and all of that is not enough, and that they should actually show you which um, legislation gives uh, that formula for computation and which framework and all of that. Would you say they've performed a bit? Let, let, me, let, me, let me join you to put it to him properly. Okay. <laughs> they, organized labor, I see you, they must be able to fund getting an actuarial person, an expert, to give them this computation the way they see it vis-a-vis -vis what SNIT does. Mm. So they are well informed to go and have a conversation with SNIT, whether at board level, tripartite level, or in a certain forum. I but think that as conversation you see, they, has started. They haven't, they haven't done that. 
They haven't, I can guarantee you, they haven't done it. <laughs> I was not well, uh, I'll that. put it this way. If we take example from South Africa, government stays clear out from SNIT operations. Okay. Here, once in a while you find government going to SNIT to borrow. Mm. Apart from going to borrow from SNIT itself for projects and what have you, we find them also coming in. You see, sectors of ministry saying that we want to take 30% of our first year to go into housing, that, 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 that. So it makes accountability of SNIT, okay, to be very difficult to actually manage. I will always speak for SNIT, not that because they are members of the ICU, because they too, when they retire, the same condition applies to them as workers. It will also be suicidal on our part to say that let's leave everybody to go and choose his own pension fund. Yeah. In fact, in the spirit and the wake of that, that brought the 208 Act 7 census, mm. so that at least some opportunities will be given to those who are managing the second year to give hope and future to all workers who will be retiring. Right. But what do we see? Mm. The second year itself, ICU undertook a research, and what we saw there was horrible. Yeah. The, um, initial funds that went to Bank of Ghana, you know, to be held in check until this structure comes in play, mm. that everybody who was migrating to the at seven senses will have its accounts credited. As I speak to you today, some farm managers have not been able to clear themselves. Mm. They are not able to even give statements, okay, to contributors, you know, to the fund. Now, the weakness that we thought was with SNIT have reared its ugly head over there. But today I can tell you, SNIT has improved tremendously. If you retire within maximum three months, mm -hmm. your computation and everything is given to you. Okay. That is short of if the calculation is right or wrong. Mm -hmm. But they have improved their system. In fact, if you go to their portals now, you find them displaying the, this formula I'm talking about that we are not happy with because its definition is not clear to us. you find it there. Mm -hmm. So it's like before you go in, at least, if you follow this simple calculation or you allow somebody with accounting background to do it for you, you know how much you are going to receive from SNIT. Okay. okay. But and why then, haven't you done that all this while and explained to workers that well, this is what it is? You are not a member of ICU. ICU members are getting benefits in our training. Okay. We are unleashing this knowledge to them as and when we get the training opportunity and we give it to them. Okay. Now, so with this, it will be too bad to just generalize and say SNIT is not performing. Look at SNIT's contribution to our society. It's quite enormous. We will be expecting more. But we also know that if you go into any investment, it is not all investment that must yield positive results. Okay. If you are risk averse, you can't take certain risk and you can't take certain decisions. SNIT equally in their investment plans have taken certain decisions and it has failed. Those ones that have failed should not go and say that oh, then the entire investment you know, plan of SNIT have failed, therefore they are useless and they cannot help the system. Mm. They have been giving us their uh, brochures annually. If you take it, you find the various investments SNIT undertakes in any given year, how they are faring. Those that are not faring well and they must let it go as early as possible. Those that they must even change the managers of the project. All these things are there. Mm. So the very act that brought SNIT into existence and the very purpose and objective of it is so relevant as of today. Mm. What is left for me, I'll say, government should give them the free hand to be able to work. In so doing, government should not accumulate arrears. Okay, today we had a president yeah. that he came to meet so much, he paid over one point something yeah. billion. The question is, in, within 2017 and then 2018, much. when How much power, was are they in arrears or they are also not in arrears? So going to pay. Why is it that when they are in arrears, they don't pay penalties? Mm -hmm. Let the small SNIT uh, contributor somewhere who What's has not paid benefit? on the 15th day of the ensuing month, okay, he will be dragged to the court and then he will be searched out to pay a penalty. The government will be true and pay the penalties. I tell you, SNIT can deliver more and bigger. That, that because is why probably... government itself is a bigger employer so mm. far as the SNIT contribution is concerned. That, that... So some discipline from government must also come. Yeah. And I think then the relevance of SNIT will come. And, and, and of course, Dr. And, uh, Yalba hated that it may lead to the collapse of uh, SNIT if government continues borrowing and it doesn't pay. But yeah. one issue that came up uh, recently was the fact that uh, 
pension funds were going to be used uh, for the amalgamated bank and uh, some workers kicked against it we had not kicking against it organized labor were part of the negotiation i mean what do workers gain out of their pension being used for such see the uh, first question we asked the consolidated uh, bank ghana yeah how was it premeditated who are the owners how was it formed we've seen banks that have collapsed in this country and the directors okay were even not known and the directors were borrowing they were not paying we saw all these things come up as we sit here today how many of them have been brought before the law court to come and pay okay out of their own negligence or monies that they ask that oh give to this man or give to this man or give to this company and they have not been able to pay that indiscipline what has happened to it and now these uh, CBG, Consolidated Bank Ghana, where is it coming from? Was the government having an idea that I want to create another government bank? Mm. Okay, so it's out of a collapse of certain banks, then we decide that oh, let's create another bank. And that definition is not sitting well with us. The yes, workers we don't know who the directors are. And then we are coming to take a chunk of you know, worker money to go and put in there. Now look at what they are doing again. Workers to work with this CBG. Where are they coming from? Where are they coming the from? The banks that have collapsed. People were there, whether they were blowing the whistle, they were not listening to them. So the risk of where the money is going is the fears that some of us are saying that so no. They have a genuine concern. Yes. But you, we're running you? out of time. We need to um, wrap up. Uh, briefly, uh, we're talking about higher wages, better conditions. Is, is that the way forward to actually enhancing the state of the Ghanaian worker? The way forward is enhanced productivity and employers must provide leadership they must set targets they must ensure they set up and give the workers the tools to be able to work and they must appraise them properly and pay them based on productivity that's it how take it from this angle Thank you. we have over liberalized our economy mm. and therefore we're having a lot of foreign goods coming into the system. Yeah. And I always use Nestle Ghana as an example. Nestle Ghana will be producing ideal money. Briefly. Briefly. Just briefly. Okay. Now, you go to your market stands, look at various dairies that you find over there. The more we patronize that which is from outside, we are killing the local families that are here. I'd like to thank and you for coming on PM Express. I'm extremely grateful for having you. Solomon Kote is the Secretary General, General Secretary to the ICU, and uh, Austin Game is a labor expert. And you've had all the issues, uh, all the points enumerated for the way forward in enhancing the Ghanaian worker. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Aisha Ibrahim. Enjoy the rest of our programs.